among those who lost pretty much everything. The state lawmaker who represents Lee County, Spencer Roach, lives in North Fort Myers. He did evacuate and he is back there right now for the emergency work. Representative Roach, it is so good to see you this morning. I notice you're, um, you're, you're inside a little bit dry. I'm going to guess that's for connectivity with us that just doesn't really exist outside at the moment. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, cell service is extremely limited here. Uh, you're not really able to send or receive text messages, calls, response body. Uh, internet is, is almost non-existent. I'm operating now on cellular data in, in one area of town that seems to have it. But uh, prior to this, I was at a, a food and water distribution site uh, helping get supplies to my friends and neighbors and constituents. But I, I made a trip across town here to do this interview with you. But yeah, uh, er everything is limited here. Uh, and we are we are in survival mode right now. I don't even think it's fair to say that we're in recovery mode yet, but we're trying to get the essentials to folks. Uh, could be weeks before some folks get power and uh, and water on. So that's what we're focusing on right now. Yeah, well, your your professional is also your personal. So, so how are you? How is your family? How did everything in your world um, manage in the past week? Well, I've certainly had better weeks. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm over uh, most of the emotional shock, but uh, uh, you know, my, my home took a lot of damage, like many homes in my neighborhood. Um, and I, I do I do want to clarify that uh, that you know the house is is salvageable. It was not destroyed. It was it was damaged. It, it took some um, some water on the inside. And you know what what hit us so hard here? Uh, and there was some cataclysmic wind damage. I want to be very clear about that. This was almost uh, a Category Five hurricane. Uh, the wind speed was just a couple of miles per hour short of a uh, of a. Uh, uh, of a designation category five hurricane, but the storm surge is what hit us here. So my house is structurally sound. Uh, the inside is trashed from the water that got inside. And then of course, after that, uh, you have to deal with, you know, here in South, South Florida, the humidity uh, produces mold and mildew very quickly. So the remaining things that you have inside the house don't last very long, whether it's clothing, furniture, or artwork. So, uh, you know, I've just thrown myself into my work here, serving my constituents and, and haven't really dealt with my own personal loss yet, but, but that time will come. But, uh, you know, those are things that can be replaced. It's hard uh, to see the things you, you've built over a lifetime kind of washed away. But uh, uh, but I'm alive and my, my parents are OK. So so that's a blessing. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people are just starting to realize it, it won't be over for a very, very long time. I, I want to talk about a little bit about the response that we're seeing. You know, we've seen convoys of, of our local first responders heading across I-75. You've got federal, you've got state, you've got a lot of local people all trying to and all working sort of in tandem and next to each other, no power. Uh, we saw a truck with potable water. Uh, the irony here is so much water, but for damage, not for use. So give us a sense of how all of this is being coordinated. Yeah, so this is a uh, full scope of government response here. We've got every level, every branch of government uh, participating in this response. Uh, we, we do have the National Guard here. We have the Coast Guard here, which is uh, conducting extensive search and rescue operations today off our barrier islands. We've still got people uh, trapped in houses, trapped on islands that we're trying to get off. The, the bridges, of course, have been destroyed. For the, so for the first time in almost 60 years, uh, those, those islands are not accessible by vehicle. So the only way to op rescue those folks is by air or by boat, and it seems to be mostly by boat at this point. Um, yeah, and, and, and to your to your earlier point about the recovery, it's going to take uh, probably close to a decade or more to rebuild uh, Lee County and the surrounding counties uh, from from this magnitude of damage. But uh, but again, we've got every resource here available. Uh, coordinating those resources is sometimes challenging, but we're doing the best we can. And, and you know, we're we're operating with limited communication abilities here, um, uh, so that's hard. Uh, gas is a problem, water is a problem, electricity is a problem, but we're doing the best we can uh, to focus on the, the base elements, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the food, water, shelter is what we're focusing on right now. You know, I, um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about rebuilding and how uh, and the possibilities of that, but I want to talk about first, um, there, people are being recovered right now. Uh, so far, the number of dead that we've heard, most of them are in your county, Lee County. Uh, I'm guessing a lot of those are going to turn out to be uh, senior citizens. There's a, a very significant population of that. Um, you evacuated, and I know you evacuated fairly late. The evacuation call in Lee County did not come until about less than 24 hours before Ian came ashore. Uh, and there is some reporting that that evacuation call was late by county's own protocols and standards. What can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, um, that's that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't think that that's that's a fair assessment. I mean, really, even the day of the storm, we thought this thing was going to Tampa. We thought it was going far north of us, and uh, and we did not we did not have an evacuation order in place. Uh, and when it went out, uh, you know, there was when the storm changed. And this happens so frequently. I mean, you look at uh, uh, Irma and Charlie when they both hit hit the Gulf Coast as part of the Gulf Coast. They they changed very rapidly. But uh, you know, as soon as the storm sh- started to shift east and south. Uh, I think the county issued the evacuation order as soon as the data indicated that the storm was could potentially hit in this area. So I do, I do think they were following the data uh, the entire time. Now, look, is, is hindsight 2020? Absolutely. If we had known the storm was coming here, uh, I think they would have issued the evacuation order earlier. And I think certainly more people would have evacuated. I mean, you know, even after the evacuation order, you had a number of folks who did not evacuate. Lots of people in my neighborhood uh, did not evacuate. Um, and I, like you said, I, I waited until, uh, you know, almost the last minute. I, I didn't leave town until 11 o'clock on Tuesday night. Uh, and it was a white knuckle drive for me across the East Coast to get to a, a safe place in Stewart, Florida. But I'm certainly glad I left. And uh, I think many people are wishing that they had left. This sounds like it might be one of those lessons learned because, you know, it, I know in Southeast Florida, when the evacuation call comes in, um, it's usually don't go very far, just drive west a little bit to higher ground. A little bit east of Naples, Fort Myers is Everglades. So, so maybe this is a, a bit of a lesson learned for different sort of evacuation protocols. Do you think? Yeah, and, and I'd say keep in mind, you know, in, in Florida we have uh, at least prior to the storm we have about a thousand to four, uh, 1,400 people uh, a day, every day, moving to the state of Florida for the first time. So a lot of those folks are unfamiliar uh, with <clears throat> with the scope and the magnitude of these storms and how quickly they can turn into you know full force hurricane. Uh, so they may not have taken this as seriously as as native Floridians. But look, you also have native Floridians that uh, that are, uh, you know, somewhat somewhat used to these storms and uh, somewhat desensitized to evacuation orders uh, based on what they view as sensationalized reporting over the years. And I, I certainly understand that. And, you know, one thing one thing I, I, that people will learn here very quickly, it's not always the hurricane, the storm that is the worst part. Even if you stayed here and didn't evacuate and you survived and your home survived, the aftermath of the storm is, is very bad. I mean, you can't get gas, you can't get air conditioning, you can't get food and water. If you have small children, you have to worry about getting uh, uh, food for your infant or diapers for your children. It's very difficult in the aftermath of those storms. And at that point, you can't evacuate because there's no gasoline. So uh, I, I think for a lot of folks, that is even worse, particularly our elderly folks who have uh, you know medical conditions that make them more vulnerable. We had to evacuate, I think, 400 patients in the last couple of days from Lee County hospitals because we can't provide water. So even the normal, you know, we have we have a geriatric population in Florida that's well established and well known, but even the normal folks who uh, are suffering from stroke or diabetes or heart conditions that would call nine one one, that response has been compromised. Yes. So uh, you have that on top of the of the hurricane uh, destruction. Absolutely, uh, Representative Roach. A couple more questions for you, if you wouldn't mind sitting sure. tight for just a minute while we take a quick break, and we'll be right back. We are back with State Representative Spencer Roach, who represents Lee County, a resident of North Fort Myers there in a very personal and very professional sense. You know, uh, Representative Roach, we were talking last segment about the forecasting, the rebuilding. So much of Fort Myers is kind of what we would call old Florida. I mean, been there for (coughs) decades, um, quaint seaside little neighborhoods. Um, rebuilding now has to take into account that you, you can build for wind as expensive as it might be. You really can't build for water. Do you foresee changes in how and where <coughs> people are going to be rebuilding and, and living? I mean, this is just not going to be people going home and rebuilding because they've got to be thinking what's next. Well, that, that's a good point. And I don't know to what extent folks are going to want to foot the bill to rebuild in, in some of the areas that have just flooded, uh, you know, given given what's certainly going to be an insurance crisis that's going to be magnet, magnified uh, by this cataclysmic storm. Uh, but, you know, one thing that you pointed out about the historic nature of this town, you know, so many places flooded uh, with uh, Hurricane Ian that have never flooded before. My neighborhood in the entire 168, almost 170 year history of Lee County has never flooded, not once. And we thought it couldn't happen. And, and it sure did happen. It happened, it happened in a big way. Uh, so a lot, a lot of that sort of historic feel, I, I'm afraid, will be lost when, they, when, the, if, when and if people do rebuild there. Uh, they're not going to rebuilding 
be rebuilding you know, the new modern home. So I, I do worry that some of the culture uh, of what made Fort Myers special uh, may not be exactly the same uh, once this is over with. But, you know, times change and, and buildings change. Uh, but, you know, this, this certainly did make a dent uh, in our community in, in more ways than just the physical structure of these homes and houses. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's worth saying. I mean, we were in king tides when the storm hit, um, plus rising seas. I know climate change, but politically, there are different views on why that's happening. But I think everyone agrees the seas are higher than they were decades ago. So certainly all of those things have to be taken into account. Um, we learned this morning that the president and the first lady will be visiting Florida this week. Uh, I know everybody on the ground right there is saying this is not a time for politics. I think those of us who work in this business know that we see politics every time. That's not not necessarily a bad thing, but politics are a part of everybody's lives. W what do you will you get a chance to talk with the president and, and what will you ask him for? You know, I don't know if I'll get a chance to visit with the president, but if I if I do, I would certainly thank him for the resources that uh, the federal government has brought to bear in this response so far and ask him to continue uh, to support us down here in Florida, and, and I have every belief that uh, uh, that he that the first lady, uh, uh, excuse me, that the president will support us here in our efforts. Uh, I, I don't see a, a politicization, politicization of this. Uh, look, I've had uh, I've had colleagues from across the aisle in Florida uh, where we have uh, you know heatedly debated uh, some of the issues of the day. Uh, I had one drive in this morning, three hours, to bring me personally some supplies and bring some water for my district. So uh, you know, I, I don't think there's anything. Uh, uh, really political and about trying to serve your constituents and make sure they have food, water, and shelter and helping to rebuild. And uh, and we would do the same thing for anyone else around the state. So the, the bipartisan nature of the response, both in the state and at the federal government, has been uh, refreshing to see. And I look for that to continue. And, um, and yeah, I, I don't see that being an issue. But if I did see the president, did have a chance to visit with him, I would, I would thank the president for his, his effort, his support. FEMA's been great. They're on the ground. The National Guard's here. Um, and I would ask them to continue to support our rebuilding efforts here in Florida. That is great to hear. And we wish you, Representative Roach, all good things going from here forward for you and your family. And certainly whatever we can do to help you will let us know too. Thank you so much. Thanks for telling our story. Okay, thanks.